So most of you have done some stretch therapy work, so you know the basic form points of hip flexor stretch, but maybe not Mark so much. Maybe not all of you over here. So this is our setup. One foot forward, one knee back. Come to a comfortable kind of lunge, very similar to the way John started out this morning. Make any adjustments that you need for the back kneecap. Gauge whether perhaps you did need an additional knee pad. Grab that as required. And notice that I'm now pulling the rolled up mat. So it's just contacting the quad as it comes through. Don't force it all the way through, it's going to stop further lunge happening. Okay, I've got a hand on here, you could use a knuckle support, any kind of support you can to remind you to keep the body a little bit upright. And just test your passive range, how far can you go just hanging out in this position. Not doing anything at all, just lunging through, so not being particular about form just yet. And we're also not going to our maximum stretch immediately, because we'll be here for a while. Good. Can you breathe and relax in that position? Now I'm just doing some tiny little shifts of my pelvis left and right. We call these micro movements, that's not our terms, just tiny little movements in your first stretch position. See if there is any movement, might not be. Okay, now you're going to come and press yourself back a little bit further. Don't be too concerned if you arch in the lumbar spine just a little bit. And then your other arm, you're going to take it straight up next to your ear, like a handstand line through the shoulder. And we're going to do a series of momentarily strongly reaching the, the arm up to the ceiling and then let it collapse again. Reach straight up, let it collapse again. Don't let yourself come out of your lunge as you add that movement. Now for me on this side, because I'm doing the left side and that's the stomach side, I can feel that deep in the abdomen. Something's pulling deep in here. All I'm doing is adding the lengthening movement. <coughs> Try and sequence your breathing so you take a full breath in as you really strongly lift up, lift up, lift up, and relax. At the same time as you're lifting up, and if you've got the stabilization you could do this, Put the fingers on the belly there and actually pull all of those tissues up. Feel all of that get pulled up. So it's kind of surface, it's all the skin on the front. But on this side for me, it's deep in the abdomen as well. It might not be for you, don't worry, we've got a lot more to come. Good. Okay, now you're going to put the support hand a little bit out to the side here and just touch the fingertips just to stabilize you. And now you're going to do the same reaching but over to the side. A little bit of a side bend, but more just a reaching off the body. And play around with the position of the top shoulder in relation to the bottom one to get a line that works for you. So just momentary reaching out a bit further and then relaxing it a little bit. And just feel how that feels. Now you might be getting a little bit of cramping in the lower back on the other side control for that. Don't worry about that. It's very slow movements. It's all supported. Just feel how that line feels. Good. Okay, come down. Now change the hands over. We go the other way. But here I'm really going to focus on leaning back a little bit. See how that feels. Add some rotation movements. If it's too strong in the lower back, then you might want to press the hips out of the lunge a little bit, pull on a stronger tail tuck. So you're controlling the degree of extension in the lumbar spine. So just do some moving around there. Reach the top arm off the body to get that length. Are you able to breathe? You don't want to be holding your breath here. Good. Hopefully as you're adding little bits of movement, so every now and then your hips are actually sinking a bit deeper into the lunge as you're warming up. Good. Okay, come down. Come back to this position. More comfortable? Yeah. So we're going to do a series now of short, sharp contractions. Back knee, just momentarily, strong contraction, relax. Strong knee dragging contraction, 
relax. So not our ordinary five count one, but strong contraction, relax. And each time you relax... So when you do the contraction, nothing must move. That's right. So you're just trying to drag the knee through, relax. And because it's short, sharp, you get to put quite a bit of effort into it. And relax. Good. Couple more of those. All right, and now really brace yourself and do a full 10 count contraction. Count for yourself, slow, smooth, and then increase the intensity of that knee dragging contraction for the full 10 count. Still got our body a little bit upright, so Robert, don't bend forward so much yet. I'm at eight, nine, 10, slowly stop, take a deep breath in, press the torso a bit more upright. And as you breathe out, pull your hips deeper into the stretch. You can be using a bit of a hand drag via the support arm. You can be using a hooking action for the hamstring of the front leg. Breathe and relax. Good. Again, that little wriggling side to side. Just trying to move around a tiny, tiny bit. I'm wiggling side to side in a left-right sense, just tiny movements. Good. All right, now you're going to explore moving around on the kneecap of the back leg. So I'm fully turned around to be on the inside of the kneecap. Then I'm going back through the centre position. And then I'm rolling around the outside of the kneecap. So you think about rolling around the kneecap, but what's happening is you're rotating around the pelvis, hips. Good. See how that feels? Hey, Kenny. And the whole point of this is to try and find the tightest line, because of course we've got a massive amount of muscle here. It's not just one kind of band. As you go to the inside, you might feel it pull more into the groin muscles. Then it's kind of centered, hip flexor hammies. And then potentially you'll ride around onto those front, top, outer hip muscles, the names of which I can never remember. Just those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So how are you going? I think you've been here for three or four minutes already, about halfway there. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Push the hips back completely, but don't move the feet. We've already established the relationship between the front foot and the back knee. Fold up the back leg and hold it with opposite hand to foot. You can hold whatever way you can grab it. If you really can't grab the foot, you probably need to push the hips back more. Oppos that is opposite hand foot, yep. And then, don't be in too much of a hurry to strongly flex the knee, so don't pull the heel all the way back in. And then, how far can you go back into the lunge with the back knee folded? So, hello, quadriceps. Quadriceps heavily involved in this position. Breathe and relax. Good. You can do a little bit of wiggling around. If there's any knee discomfort, you might need to get another mat. Yeah. All sorts of cramping happening in the front leg as well. Because there's muscles under stretch there. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm going to do some more of those short, sharp, multiple contractions. This is how it goes. Guys, just listening. I'm going to press my hips back about an inch and pull the heel closer to the buttock and then sink the hips and let the heel go away. So as I press the hips back, I add more knee flexion and as I let the hips sink, I let the, hip, the heel go away a little bit. Okay? So I guess not really contraction. It's a little movement where we're placing the emphasis on the knee movement versus the hip movement. Good. So how does that feel? Can you feel the stretch move as you change the angle at the back knee? And then hopefully you're sinking deeper and deeper into the lunge each time. Good. Okay, well maybe do six or seven of those and then just pause in the full lunge position wherever that is for you. And let's do our regular contractions. First one, back knee, try and drag it forward through the floor. And again, let's try and do it for that full 10 count. Just focused on the back knee, trying to drag it through, brace the rest of your body. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Slowly stop contracting. Now the quad contraction. Try and straighten the back leg. Try and press the heel away from the buttock. Don't let it move. Again, count yourself down from ten. Quads are big, powerful muscles, so go hard with this contraction. Tom, you're not holding your foot. Why? Knee doesn't like it? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. It'll be all right on the, mat, on the padded mat, yeah. if it's a padding thing. Okay. All right, so the end of that contraction, take a deep breath in, and then try and go deeper into the lunge, and try and pull the heel a bit closer to the buttock in the full lunge position. Good. All right, and then go down onto an elbow support on the front arm. So that slackens the stretch to some extent, possibly, <laughs> theoretically, but not <laughs> experimentally. <laughs> and then try to pull the heel to the body as far as you can and hold it here for another five full deep breaths in and out. My position on this is you need the quads to be loose enough to get into exactly the same depth position as you can when you make it straight out behind you. Otherwise, they're too tight. <laughs> There's all sorts of little movements you could add here. I'm thinking of my lower leg that I'm holding onto as a bit of a tiller or rudder, and I'm moving it left to right. You can go back to that rolling around the kneecap. And yeah, the groin muscles on the front leg are massively under stretch in this position, which I'm sure you can feel. How are you going, Rory? You've stopped. <laughs> Nobody said stop. <laughs> Good. All right, now you're going to let go of the back leg and just put it down on the floor. We'll come to a double elbow support, and if you really needed to turn your mat around, you could. Tuck the toes of the back foot under. And we'll do a series of short, sharp pressing out through the back heel so the knee momentarily comes off, and then rest it down again. Do not let your hips come up as you do that hip extension, knee extension movement. Do five or six of those. So the instruction was not to get the back knee straight, it was to press out through the back heel and the knee will straighten via that. Good. And then rest the back foot and just another three or four deep breaths. Completely relaxing, no effort anymore, breathing comfortably. And when you're ready to come out, come up onto your arms again. Press the hips back with the arms and the front leg. And when you're ready, stand up. Go for a little walk around. See how the legs feel after that. A little bit jolly-like. So how would you rate the intensity of that little sequence? It's pretty intense, isn't it? I mean, it's the time you're holding it, that's one element. Might not be, might not be. Yeah. No problem, it stops. I mean, if it just overrides the experience, then you just have to back it off a little bit or build yourself up to holding it for this kind of length of time. Or quickly change legs and then go back to the immediate That can be part of it too. But it won't change the that time. No. Well, we wanted you to get your money's worth, so we just go straight to the, the end experience. <laughs> yeah, so every time we do a strong stretch like this and a long stretch, Come up and do some movements. Try and reintegrate what just happened into 
movements that you know how they normally feel in your body. And we've only done one side, so we'll do this. It wasn't actually this stretch, but it was another one, a whole standing sequence. And we had drinks afterwards and he said, all I could think was, I hate Olivia, I hate Olivia, I hate Olivia. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Excellent. Job well done. That's right. For me, that's just an intense sensation. It's not a big stretch at all. But I'm trying to cultivate this capacity to be more relaxed, not just more flexible. I'm not trying to get more flexible by this. I'm trying to relax through those strong sensations. Shall we do the other side? We must do the other side. Okay. It might not be exactly the same. There's no exactness to the sequence. It's just adding some movements. So grab more knee padding if you need it. We have straps if you really find it hard to reach your own ankle. We've got um, martial arts straps, not those stretchy straps. Helen, what you could do is have a chair next to you and do the whole sequence with the torso more upright. Yeah. That'll tend to alleviate the cramping of the front leg. Yeah. Tend to. Just a chair or a bench. It's just to keep the torso more upright and provide some sta stability. Okay, let's do it. So one foot forward, one knee back, about hip width apart, and then just position that mat. So we're using the rolled up mat as a prop, but also as a comfort cue to your body as soon as the brain senses that there's something um, filling this gap between the floor and your thigh it's much more comfortable to relax there. So we're kind of not really fully upright, but we're not bent forward either, and we're just feeling out how it feels initially on this second side. We're not too concerned about squareness or tucking the tail or anything like that, just how does it feel. If you're straight away aware that the kneecap is unhappy, it might just need a micro repositioning, so you go up onto the ball of the foot and reposition. Might just get off some part of the kneecap if it's the kneecap itself. Or you might need to get another mat. That's good. Okay, and then just do some tiny movements of some sort, left to right. There's no reason you can't do little circles with the hips and pelvis. John did a bit of that this morning. Just feeling where there is any movement beyond the, the movement required for the lunge. Are you aware early on of any left-right difference? I'm sure you all did your tighter side first, so this one will be a joy in comparison. This is like a holiday. <laughs> Not mine, you have a holiday. Good. Okay, so make sure you're stable. You can maintain forearm on front knee or go to a hand support, because then we went to this position. So we're thinking real length, little bit of leaning back, maybe pull on a tiny tail tuck if the capacity is there to do that. And then we did a series of reach off the body, straight up, and then relax. Think about maximum distance between the knee and your navel. That's what we're going for there. We're adding that length. Straight up. I find it's really good to use some pinning and actually really help pull those front abdomen tissues up. It's on the side of the back leg. So for me on this looser side and also the non-stomach side, it's nowhere near as intense on this side. It's actually quite pleasant. On the other side it was not pleasant at all. Good. Okay, and then we went to hand out to the side a little bit just to stabilise you. Might need a block, might need something. And then we just did some reaching off in that kind of lateral slash rotation plane. Again, there's no exact line. Think about all the fascia on that front line of the body. We want to explore all of them. The reaching off the body is what really helps with this. Yep. Move 
slowly, especially when we've got combination spinal movements that involve extension, it can instantly bring on some cramping, so move slowly. Are you able to breathe and relax? Good. And then change the arms, opposite. It's up to you how much you really rest on that arm. I'm just using it to stabilise me, I'm not really resting on it. And then try some lateral movements combined with different amounts of rotation. Good. You're mentally comparing this side to the first side. Is there any difference? If so, what's the nature of the difference? back to the front and then I think we did a series of knee drag short sharp contractions so brace yourself nothing moves as you try and drag the knee through hold and relax drag the knee through hold and relax do about six or seven of those Good. Every time you relax, you're trying to let the hips sink a little bit deeper. Good. Okay, another contraction we can do here, which I forgot on the first side. The hand that's resting on your rolled up mat, in my case the right hand, I'm going to momentarily do a strong abdominal curl into the mat through that hand and then relax. You're trying to activate the deep hip flexors to do that pressing action and then relax. Try that four or five times. Good. Does that feel in compute in your body? You can actually do that pressing action with the hip flexors. Yeah, keep it still. The back knee? Yeah, the back knee. Okay. Well, you could do most of this with the knee up, it's just going to be way more strengthening. Yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Okay. You put it under the shin, you won't have the knee touching it. No, it's not about it. So guys, let's move back now into, move the hips back because now we have to do the folded up leg part of this sequence. So move the hips back all the way because if you don't move the hips out and you pull the leg up, there's a very strong chance that your hamstring will cramp and that's most unpleasant if you don't want that. So don't be too... Don't be too ambitious about getting the heel all the way into the buttock because now we want to see how much can we go back into the lunge. Can you get back into the same depth lunge with your leg folded? And if you can't, it's telling you that there's some real restriction when both joints are under stretch there. Good. Breathe and relax. In this first position, let's do a little bit of moving around on the back kneecap. Inside edge, middle, outside edge a little bit. Good. Check that your belly is relaxed. Let it sag through. It's completely relaxed. Alright, now if you find a particularly tight line, and just pause on that line. And let's do some of those movements where we press the hips back a little bit and momentarily pull the heel closer to the buttock. And then as you sink the hips down, let the heel go away again. So you're changing the emphasis on the joint, knee, hip. Three or four of those. The kind of amplitude here is maybe an inch and a half of movement, it's not big movement. Alright, and then just pause in your deepest lunge, 
pull the heel in just a little bit more. Hopefully that little movement has warmed up the quad enough that you can close the knee angle a tad more. And let's do our regular contraction. So the knee drag is the first one. Full count of 10, you're trying to drag that knee through, brace the rest of the body. And once you've got the feeling, then put a little bit of effort into it. Full count of 10. Stop contracting, take a deep breath in as you breathe out, sink the hips a little bit deeper. And then do the leg straightening contraction. Try and press the heel away from the buttock. Don't let it move. Contractions are isometric in nature, so you need to get a wrist with equivalent force. And stop contracting. Go down onto elbow support. See if that allows you to both sink the hips deeper and pull the heel closer to the buttock. Wriggle around a tiny bit. Any kind of little movements. See how that feels. Check that your belly is relaxed. Okay, and then let go of the back foot, put it down. I'm going to go onto both elbows, so perhaps you want to turn your mat around. Almost done. Tuck the toes of the back foot under. And do a series of pressing out through the back heel. Relax. Pressing out through the back heel. Relax. Any more of those. And then just put the back knee down, relax the foot, and three or four more deep breaths in and out. Final position now. Onto the hands, press the hips back. And when you can, stand up. Or you can just lie down for a few minutes if that's what you feel you need to do. It's totally fine. And go through the walk. How does it feel afterwards? Yes, a lot of people they get up and almost like they've forgotten how to walk just for a few seconds, then it comes back. Yeah. So when you're ready, when you've recovered sufficiently, go back and do some little movements, trying to integrate that fairly intense stretch into movement. Maybe test any kind of regular hip extension that you know. Does it feel any different? We're not going to do any of the standing stuff that I've been playing with, but if you normally do that kind of thing, just see how it feels. Everything else was so intense that I didn't even notice the intensity. Mm -hmm. That didn't even matter. It was. Uh, <laughs> I've been stretching much harder once I got a bolster, like a bigger, like a bigger. <coughs> front leg it was like tense. Yeah. So yeah. I could relax. Like, so you felt that in your front leg as well. Where your first front leg, a big place. Uh, that was just like mind bogglingly intense. <laughs> I can't even speak. I was going to pass that. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Um.
Um, I felt that the idea on the hands you touched on the front way on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also to the deeply depressed, his legs are stronger than still on the hamstring. Is that what you're saying? Holding him down to the breast there. Yeah. Is massive amount of work being done on the front way? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I felt like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I feel it moves around, starts adductor, then it comes, becomes cramped. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you can stop, or you can build up over time just doing shorter durations, or back it off a little bit, maybe you're actually at your limit, and so you can't possibly hold it that long. Don't forget that this is afternoon two of two intense days of physical work, so that's part of it as well. But it's like they're the same time. That's yeah. associated with yeah. the yeah. That's the yeah. It's just intense. Yeah. <laughs> it's very unlikely to be that intense on any future occasion. First, <laughs> I'm not promising anything. It's unlikely. <laughs> I'm being very um, circumspect. Absolutely. Mm. But depending on how you position yourself, you can make it one or more or the other. We always get into front splits with the front leg completely bent, set up the pelvic positioning, maximum stretch the hip flexors and then only extend the front knee as much as the complex can sustain. Most people go into front splits with the front leg completely straight and then they've got no chance whatsoever unless they've already got loose hip flexors and most people don't in that movement, they can't square the hips or tuck the tail. So take the hamstrings out of it, that's the message. Position, the most important hip flexor and hamstring flexor position, full stop. Yep. And any athletic form of hamstring flexor, the knee is never straight except in the gymnastics. Mm -hmm. yeah, for every other athletic form of hamstring flexor, the knee is bent. This is all the hamstring flexor you need to run all the past 100 meters at a time. The knee never comes out of the hip, the foot is never in front of the knee. Everyone's got that amount of flexibility but not in combination with the back leg and extension. Okay.